Welcome back to ESA Summer 21. We are raising money for Save the Children. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Twitch and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. Now, it's time for Distro TV running Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. Take it away. All right, hello everyone. I'm Distro, and I will get right into the first cutscene of the game. The timer starts uh, when I do the countdown, say go, when the cutscene starts playing. So, three, two, one, go. Okay, so hello, as I said, I'm Distro, this is Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, any percent V1. Any percent means that we play the category where we have to play the game as quickly as possible without any restrictions. Only restriction is that we can't use any cheat codes, um, but that's, I think, self-explanatory. And V1 is the uh, first version of the game, which is the Xbox, PC and PS3 versions of the game. V2 is PS2 and GameCube. There are some level differences and they're big enough to um, justify two different categories. And you will have noticed the game is in German. That's because German has the fastest dialogue. Uh, it's 12 seconds faster than English. And I'm not commentating alone. Uh, joining me is Lollipop OMG. Hey guys, welcome. I am Lollipop and I will be co-commentating this run. So this is Splinter Cell. Uh, this is a stealth game. Um, and you'll see throughout the game, uh, we have multiple different levels with different variations. Uh, so this is a stealth game. So sometimes we don't start with a weapon. Other times we cannot kill any enemies or other times we cannot trigger any alarms, stuff like that. So we're going to have to go around these uh, variations and we're going to have interesting speedrun strats to, um, yeah, go around those. All right, so in this category, quick saving and quick loading is allowed and we will make use of that during the speedrun. Because whenever there's a dialogue playing, it's a sound file playing in the game, and when you quick save and then quick load, it skips the dialogue entirely. And um, for now, we have a training course. I have to look at some lights before I gain movement control. And um, the dialogue skips in training are a bit different for some reason, because Sam freezes and I can't quick save anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spam quick save, and then I have to spam quick load and quick save with a very specific timing. And it's likely to fail because it's really tricky. And the first one is coming up now. So you will see it very soon. Once I get up on that ledge. They got it, nice. So there is a bunch of those in training. The other ones are way easier to skip. What you just saw now is a double jump, a wall jump. Just a game mechanic. And instead of going for the obstacle course, we actually already attempted the trick. And it's a very difficult one, so let's see. Oh, this is looking good. First try, let's go. Let's try. So this day is quite a decent amount of time. And, whoops, I should not have rolled there. It's a mistake, because I have low health. I'm gonna play it safe. There's another dialogue skip here. I'll also mention that I have uh, interaction bound to multiple down, which allows me to quickly uh, skip dialogue boxes if there are any that I have to skip in training. I can immediately interact with doors or other uh, things in the game. I can also quickly interrogate people. Also, Lollipop is going to take over for a bit now. So uh, we're going to be lockpicking a door here. Now, the interesting thing about lockpicking is that it's always the same lockpick sequence. So this role always knows how many times he needs to click in order to open a door. Uh, so for this section, we are learning how to interrogate NPCs. So we're going to ask this guy, what's the code for this door? We're going to enter the code on the code lock now. Code locks in this game always have the same code. So this row is just a genius. He remembers all of the codes in his head. He doesn't have a spreadsheet or anything, obviously. I mean, it's just that smart. So <laughs> there's a lot of codes in this game. Um, I don't have a spreadsheet, yes. Yeah, no, definitely not. So this is uh, the eye scanner. Uh, we're also going to be using special NPCs to open certain doors throughout the game. Uh, and then we knock him out like that, because that's all they deserve. Uh, so here you're going to see our first um, shooting uh, of a light. So basically in this game, when you're in the dark, enemies don't see you. Uh, so shooting lights is uh, going to be pretty useful throughout the run. As yeah, you can see, it... Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> what's going on? Um, so as you can see, it took him two shots to shoot that light. So there is bullet spread in this game, which means shooting can be pretty random at times. Even if he's aiming directly at an enemy, it might take a few shots to actually get the shot. So here he shot a camera so that the camera doesn't see him to not trigger the alarm. Even though there is like half a second of the camera that can actually see you before it actually raises the alarm. 
because I don't know. I guess the guards like to give you a little chance or something. They're cool. Uh, so in this section, we're gonna be hiding this enemy in the dark. Uh, so in this game, when you hide corpses in dark spots of the map, uh, other NPCs are gonna come and try to look for. Uh, well, they're looking for you, looking for corpses and everything to raise alarms if they find them. So when you hide corpses in the dark, they don't see it. <laughs> Because that makes sense, but this is an intended mechanic. It's actually the game works like that But we'll be using that to our advantage because some spots in the map even though they're not technically dark uh, Visually, they are still considered dark and we'll be using that to our advantage in the run To not raise any alarms Okay, so in this room, uh, this is the noise room where you're supposed to practice not making any noise So you're supposed to go slow and stealthy, but we don't like doing that. We like going fast. So we're going to be doing what we call crouch glitching, which is crouching and uncrouching fast enough to where Sam, the main character that we're playing as, does not have time to make a footstep. Now, the only time you actually make noise in this game when you walk is when you make a footstep. And since uncrouching and crouching fast enough doesn't make you do a footstep, well, you don't make any sound, so you can just sneak behind enemies, no problem. We have time for one donation because this cutscene is unskippable. Okay. Thank you so much to Anonymous for your $40 donation with no comment. Thanks so much. If there are more, just keep them coming for now. I might also like to talk about um, some prizes that everybody has a chance right now to win. Um, if you have a minimum donation of $30, uh, you have a chance to win an ESA-themed Nintendo Switch Pro Controller made by Spicy Frog. This controller is really cool, and it only takes a $30 minimum donation right now to be able to win it. Okay, so this is Police Station. This is the first actual story-relevant uh, mission of the game. I would also like to mention I'm very happy because I got all the dialogue skips in training. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very nice. Oh, I'm putting this hatch and you will saw, see me roll into this crawl space, which takes a bit of time. And if you pull out your gun and walk diagonally, you're faster than actually just crouching through here. I'm using this uh, pipe for a wall jump, uh, which saves me a bit of time because I don't have to climb it. And I'm going to do a skip in this burning building, which Lollipop is going to explain. So in this building that's on fire, we are supposed to be looking for someone and talk to them. But instead of going through the building, we're going to do a skip here, which is uh, jumping through fire, which is, you know, <laughs> very dangerous. Don't try it, but here we go. Uh, oh. Let's try. First try, let's go. Okay, so we talked to the guy who was right next to the other side of the fire. Now, we took a lot of health loss from now. We're still losing health here through the smoke. In this room, as you can see on the right side of the screen, uh, the health bar is very low right now because of that skip, but it's it was it was worth it. We saved a lot of time. And now for the remainder of this level, though, uh, this is going to have to quick save a lot to make sure he doesn't die, because one hit will kill him for doing that trick. So it's a bit risky, but it's worth it in the end. Let me alert that guard, which uh, made the other guard run towards me. And he opened the door, and while he's opening the door, he's busy with animation, and he cannot shoot me. So I just make use of that to shoot him in the head. Now over here, we go down an elevator shaft, which you have to climb down normally, but we use a small glitch here. We will crouch and bomb into this wall, which negates the fall damage, and it allows us to drop much faster without dying. And with any fall damage, I would have died, because the HP, as Lollipop mentioned, is very low right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> If you're wondering why the game goes black and white sometimes, it's because we're using the vision to be able to see in the dark. Yeah, night vision goggles. Yeah. Over here, I made some noise so the guards think I'm down there, and then he, their teammate uh, goes around the corner to check for me too. But it's very convenient because it allows me to just run past them, so I basically skip three guards. Now over here, we have to go past this gate, but it's closed. Instead of panicking, we roll into this secret hidden room and hack the computer which opens the gate. And we will also pick up the med kit to heal ourselves because um, there are going to be a bunch of enemies and I'm very likely to die otherwise. With some crouch glitching so this guy doesn't hear us. And now there are a few guys coming up as I mentioned. The first one uh, will, by, will be slightly AI manipulated hopefully if I'm fast enough and if the bullet threat cooperates. I'm going to shoot this light, okay that seems good. He saw me. I have to shoot him. 
I was supposed to just run past him, but sometimes it just doesn't work. But now I just uh, shot them instead. And there's a guard above me that doesn't see me, but that's fine. Um, over here we do a little bit of parkouring. Slightly unintended route, um, but we hit the low trigger. The low trigger is intended, of course, but the dwarf frame jump isn't. But it's still the same level. It's a very long one, I know. But at least it has a lot of sections. But we roll behind this guard, make some noise. He turns around. And before he can react, he's already dead. There's a technician here who's going to go for the alarm because he noticed me. And I take him up before he hits the alarm because there's a guard in the room back there who would come to me and he would instantly kill me with the low health that I have. But yeah, since I hit the guard, uh, the technician, before he hit the alarm, we're fine. Now if you check this door in the back, if you can see it, this is where I will have to go at the end of the level. But first I casually roll up the stairs. I have to um, fulfill a mission objective here, which is hacking a computer. And the door that they talked about sometimes is open by now, sometimes it isn't. It's a bit of randomness. Halfway across the room we start running, but the animation takes a bit, so they don't shoot me right away. And the door is cl is open, which is very good, so we get to finish the level right away. Nice. Careful here. Alright, okay, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> so this is Defense Ministry, we do a bit of parkouring. Please get in there. Now there is a guard scripted to come in here. I'm hiding in the corner, it's dark, he doesn't see us. We just sneak past him. And we go to the basement where we have to interrogate someone and Lollipop is going to explain what's happening now. Okay, so going into the parking lot in the basement, uh, this we're going to be doing a very specific uh, train of events. So we're going to be shooting a pillar in order to attract an enemy uh, who is going to be running towards the alarm. And uh, that will allow us to then, there we go, shooting right there. He's running towards the alarm. We can just grab him and be like, nope. And then we knock him out in this very precise spot, which is considered a dark spot by the game. Even though there's a light right above him, but they won't find him, it's fine. He's in the dark, guys. <laughs> so the reason why we hide him there is uh, because in this level, if we reach a single alarm... So same thing here, we're killing the light so that um, the corpse doesn't get found later. Because if we get an alarm, the level will fail. So we want to make sure the level doesn't fail. We need to hide all the corpses. Over here, there's still a god left, but we just run past him and he's blind and deaf, and that's it. He doesn't see us. But we turn off the light here, so he doesn't see us still. What I just equipped was a one-way lockpick, which allows me to instantly open the door that would require manual lockpicking otherwise. This saves a bit of time, because I don't have to enter the whole lockpick sequence. Okay, that's a tricky jump, let me try that again. Okay, I hit, uh, the, hit the driver very well, otherwise the alarm would have sounded here and the mission would have failed. So we know we're good to go. Now we storm in the kitchen, turn off the lights so the cooks don't see us. There's a guard opening the door, which we headshot. And I will let Lollipop take over the commentary here again. Okay, so we yeet on these two enemies here, uh, which <laughs> looks pretty funny. And then this is going to be shooting the ceiling here in order to attract a special NPC general, uh, which we're going to be using for an eye scanner. So there, shooting there will attract him to the alarm, which is conveniently placed right next to the eye scanner that we're gonna have to use. Thank you, devs. So we're hiding this corpse in the dark here, again, so that we don't get an alarm for the remaining of this level. And uh, there's the general coming up to the alarm, we just grab him. And uh, yeah, thank you, sir. <laughs> I have to be careful about this god, he no normally doesn't notice me, but I'm doing a backup strat, and this is a bit scary because the timing is very tight, especially if it's moving towards me like that. Oh boy. Get him! I guess that works. <laughs> okay, <laughs> back up strats. Okay, I have to check if his body is hidden, it is. Okay, I'm equipping the laser mic here, and Lollipop is going to explain what I do with that. Yeah, so here we are going to be spying on these two people in the elevator. We're going to be listening to their dialogue, but actually we're not. We're going to be able to skip most of the dialogues from these guys. Uh, so normally the game would want you to listen to all of it, but who wants to do that? So there we go. This road just skipped a bunch of dialogue there. Uh, so we only have to listen to, you know, uh, most of the dialogue here, and then we can just keep going. Now, in this level, sometimes doing that will fail the mission randomly, so it's kind of random, but hopefully that doesn't happen. 
But we'll okay, see we there. So we're done. So now we just Spider-Man our way up there and we should be fine. Okay, so here this troll is going to take cover on this wall and that will allow him to pull out his pistol like that. Now the reason why he does it is so because when you open your inventory in this game, it actually pauses the game entirely. So instead of opening the inventory and losing a few frames to grabbing a pistol, you can just take cover on a wall. And uh, yeah, you just saw why we need the pistol. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for them, but I don't know. Sometimes in this game, elevators glitch out and can clip through. I hope that doesn't happen with the marathon run. But uh, fingers crossed. Now, after this elevator ride, I will have to open a door and there's a guard. And the idea is that I want him to see me as late as possible. And I will try to run towards him and uh, shoot him down as fast as possible without him damaging me too much. And this is fine. Yeah, that was good. And now we can get alarms in the second section of the level. Um, in the first one, we would have failed, but now it's fine. We can get a few of them. And we're going to crash into the building now, and I will let Lollipop take over again. Yeah, so very stealthily going into this window here, we are gonna kill this enemy and hack this computer. Wow, bullet spread, nice. Uh, so we're hacking this computer, skipping a bunch of dialogues. Now, uh, usually there's enemies rushing in here to stop you from hacking the computer, but for some reason skipping the dialogue here actually prevents these enemies from spawning. So we only have like maybe one enemy who's hiding in a closet back there uh, that's already been spawned in before this section, so we'll see. We're gonna go look if he's here and if we need to get him, there we go. So that's the one guy who's stopping us. So we're also gonna be shooting this camera, this light, opening this door here. Because we have to wait for Lambert to start talking to us again in order to continue hacking because technically right now we're supposed to be taking care of enemies. So doing all these things, opening the door and everything, that's actually where we're going to be escaping from. So opening the door early saves a bit of time. And there we go, Lambert just talked to us, we're able to hack the computer again and just leave. What you just saw me do is skip two very long dialogues. And the reason for that is quite simple. Um, to end the level I have to talk to a guy named Wilx. And you can only talk to NPCs when there's no dialogue running. So by skipping the two longest dialogues of that, well, whole sequence, the dialogue should line up so I can talk to the guy right away without having to wait or having to skip dialogue. Like this, perfect. Now this is oil refinery. Um, there's a lot of parkouring going here, and if there are any donations, uh, go for it. Certainly, yeah. Um, thank you so much to Iceplug for your $50 donation, and they simply say, Welcome to the ESA! Thanks, Iceplug. Yeah, there are more. Uh, thank you to username Niels for your $25 donation. <clears throat> they say, Hey, what is that one song? Frame Perfect, maybe? <laughs> we have time for one more, if there is anything. Certainly, yeah. Uh, thank you to Watcher for your $10 donation. They say, really like seeing Splinter Cell games appear on the marathon. Good luck and save the children. All right, as I uh, mentioned before in the second level, when you're in a crawl space like that, if you walk forward, you crouch very slowly. I didn't explain that very well because there was no time to do that. But if you pull out the gun and walk diagonally, you're just faster. And for this section, there's a lot of explains, so I will hand over the commentary to Lollipop for a bit. Yeah, so this guy in the cutscene who is holding a briefcase, we actually want that briefcase from him. This is the mission objective. We're going to have to steal it from him. Uh, well, actually not from him, but from another version of him. So later in the level, uh, he's going to disappear. His model is going to be switched over to another entity, which is, well, the same guy, but just a different NPC, really. And that's the briefcase we're going to have to steal from him that will actually end the mission. So for now, we are just uh, very stealthily sneaking our way behind these enemies and making our way, uh, you know, following them to the end of the level where uh, the briefcase guy is going to spawn. So we're going to knock out this guy because he's too slow, not following his crewmates correctly. Alright, over here we activate the cutscene, this is normal. This is the Splinter Cell, don't worry. This is not some dead fighter game. Um, <laughs> just script it. Uh, <laughs> we go to this corner. And as Lollipop said, we keep chasing these guys. But you wait a bit so he doesn't see me. And now, um, we're going to attempt a trick. We're going to try to go up here. We're not supposed to be up there yet. 
but we're doing it early anyway because of speed run shenanigans. Um, we will explain very soon. At first, I wait for this guy to be far enough away so he doesn't spot me when I attempt this jump. It's a very tricky one, by the way, so let's see how many tries I take. That works. Okay. All right, over here, I do some AI manipulation. I will shoot this uh, specific section, which will make this god ideally run down the stairs. Let's see if he's a good boy. He's a good boy, perfect. So now I go back down, and the god is still on the stairs, and he's actually glitched there, he's frozen for the rest of the level. And we will make use of that later. It's going to be evident why we do that very soon, don't worry. When I try to grab this guy without making any noise, so the technician doesn't hear me. And I take him far enough away so they don't hear me if I knock him out, like this. Now, once the god goes in front of the yellow stripes, activate the water here. And um, this distracts the two gods in front of the wall there, who are going to come and check for the water. And once the second god goes around the corner, I can just... Uh, go past them without any issues. And fun fact, I don't, I have no idea why, but this does not work in the English copy. Like, not this well. I don't know why they see you always. It makes no sense. I have to skip a bunch of dialogue. Okay. So that the technician starts moving earlier. And Lollipop probably explained uh, the whole briefcase thing. Now, the way it works is that once a technician enters this room that is uh, covered by the glass here, um, this glass will break, a cutscene will start, and a technician will run away. But most importantly, when a technician enters, he's going to deload. And another NPC that looks exactly the same, with the same briefcase, um, seemingly will spawn in the corner back there. But yeah, as I said, the technician is going to run away. And if you remember, the god that we got to be frozen on the stairs uh, is still there. And it happens that the stairs on the uh, around the corner here where the technician is running. So this is why we did that in the first place. The technician is blocked by the other god. So instead of chasing him to the beginning of the level to the boat, you can just take him out here. And we skip a dialogue when they pick up the like, suitcase, uh, the briefcase, and that's all refinery. Okay, now this is CIA headquarters. I don't have a gun. There are three guards here, but I just try to YOLO my way through. Ideally, they will not see me, and the ideal scenario just happened. They did not see me. Now we are going to the building. There's a guard to our right when we drop in. We will distract him by making some noise. And now we go through the middle uh, in, um, purposefully, so that we get an alarm. And the enemies from the next room will start running towards me. And for some reason they're blind and they don't see me when I do this. It looks absolutely ridiculous, but it works. So if you ever wondered how to infiltrate the CIA headquarters, this is one way to do it, I guess. Okay. Hopefully I will not clip for the elevator, it happens sometimes. Okay, we're good. Over here... There is a god that I can just ignore because he's blind. He won't even see me. Oh! First this happens. Okay, this is interesting. First <laughs> nice. I get eaten by uh, the wall, apparently. That's... Okay, I have to actually revert that because it messed up the NPCs. That was interesting. That is not a speedrun strat. Anyway, I want to alert the guard to my left here so the technician runs away. So I have free access to the door codes. He doesn't block me. In this room, there are two guards, and I just turned off the lights so they don't see me. Or at least by the time they see me, it's too late, and I'm already past them. Now I'm going to attempt an out-of-bounds, kind of, uh, by walking... Right again. By jumping onto these shelves. Get up there, come on. Okay. Now I'm going to pick up the F2000, which is a machine gun. It also has some accessories. You can see them right next to it. I'm only going to pick up the taser. Um, and to explain the accessories quickly, the taser that I just picked up, if you hit someone with it, they will just get uh, electrified and get knocked out. With the ring foil, they get stunned if you hit them once, and if you hit them twice, they get uh, knocked out. There's also cameras, but we're going to get into that later. For now, we go into the server room, because there's a mission objective here. 
I will do some AI manipulation by bumping into this technician. Which will make him run to the left instead of hitting the alarm. And um, the thing about alarms is, I'm actually actively keeping, keeping track of how many I have. At 4, the mission will fail. I have 2 right now. To avoid an alarm, I will shoot this light so that this body is hidden. And I should get the third alarm when I run for a metal detector very soon. Alright, that's number 3. And if I get one more, the mission will fail. That's important to keep in mind for the end of the level. I, want, uh, I bump into the wall so this technician hears it and it's distracted and doesn't see me. Now there is a camera here. Just enter the code and open the door and it doesn't see me and I don't know why that exactly works, but it's a thing. There's one more god for this section. Its behavior is very random. And I'm having very good luck right now because he's leaving me alone. Yeah, usually you will chase you to the end of the world, but yeah, he's he can nice kill runs. And kill runs very easily. Now we get to the third and last section of CIA. I'm sorry, there's a lot of information for this level. I'm aware of that, <laughs> but I will try to explain everything the best I can. For here, we just uh, run across the wall so the guards don't see us. Now there is a guy here, his name is Mitchell Doherty, and we can uh, manipulate him. First I have to hack his computer because that's the mission objective. And to end the level we have to carry this guy to a mini van that is parked at the end. But because carrying him is very slow, we just make him run away to where he needs to go. Going for the middle here so the other gods don't see me. I'm not allowed to kill anyone, by the way, because uh, I'm working for the NSA and this is the CIA, it would be a bit awkward. Just sneak past them, they're blind. Dorothy oh, uh, enters the door code, opens the door for us, which is very kind of him. So we return the favor and open this door for him, because we, we're nice like that. Now we shoot the wall here to do spy manipulation, so the god in the corner runs away. And Dorothy stops here, but we're gonna shoot his uh, behind twice to make him run again even farther away, which is very convenient. And this is as far as he can go without us having to carry him. And now we have to carry him. So, now it gets very spicy, so stay tuned for this. You're not allowed to kill anyone in this level, but there is a catch to that, there is a glitch in the speedrun, or in the game in general. During the next dialogue that is following now, I can kill Dorothy for some reason, and the mission doesn't fail. So I will make use of that. Oops, that was a bad throw. Let me try it again. I will make use of that. Hold on. So instead of going f through the building, I just throw Dorothy off the ledge here. He dies. Mission doesn't fail. Makes sense, right? Well, now the game... Done. It was fall damage. Fall damage. <laughs> The game is in glitch state now where I can kill everyone, but that is not my goal in the speedrun because I have to go fast. But if I have to, I might have to do it as a backup strat. But what I want to do is for this guy to notice me. And as I said before, I'm one al alarm away from uh, failing the mission. I want the guy to spot me right about now. And I get an alarm which will fail the mission. And by failing the mission, I skipped the dialogue. So by failing the mission, I passed the mission. Makes sense, right? That's actually a very difficult and random trick, so I'm happy I got that. It's nice to yeah. show that off in the marathon. It's really nice. The Kalina tag is way more action-packed. There's a lot of fighting. I ring fall this guard by shooting him twice. He gets knocked out. His friends are distracted. They don't see me. I just run past. Oh, I meant to actually destroy this. I will let Lollipop handle some commentary here. Yeah, so this drill uh, is going to be shooting a lot throughout this level, and uh, after shooting 30 rounds in this game, you're going to have to reload. So he's counting every bullet, trying to use as uh, less bullets as he can throughout the level so that he doesn't have to reload, because reloading is slow, we don't want to do that. Uh, so this guy in the cutscene, he's really nice. He's planting a mine for us in order for us to shoot and then kill him. So he's, yeah. Thank you, sir. Very useful to the speedrun. And now we can just keep going. 
on this card and go around team. Also, I opened the door while the cutscene was playing, which saves a bit of time. Now, in the second section of this level here, there are two guards to the left of me in this room. But if I just roll and then stick to the wall, they don't see me. Now, there are two other guards here on the wall mine, and by shooting the wall, the guards will run towards me, and they will activate the wall mine. And ideally, at least one of them will die. Sometimes both of them die, sometimes one of them, sometimes none of them. It depends. But one of them survived in this case, I think. Yeah. Where is he? Okay, this is a bit awkward. He's talking. <laughs> there he is. Hey, did they both survive? No, okay, only one. The other one burned down, okay. Now we have to defuse the bomb. If you look at the timer in the bottom left, very scary. Uh, but we have to go through flames and we can just roll through them without taking any damage for some reason. And now we get to the longest lockpick sequence of the whole run. But also the last one, so rejoice. Oh man, we're about to run out of time to deactivate this bomb. I'm scared, hold my hand. Oh, oh my, my god, god so close. 1 minute 50, oh no. Oh, oh Quick, oh just god. real quick, oh, nice job. <laughs> Almost lost the run to that. Now in the auditorium I'll quickly take out the two guards and I will hand over the commentary to, uh, to Lollipop for a bit again. So going into the basement here, uh, these guys from the cutscene, once the cutscene is over, they're scripted to start sprinting out of the basement to the stairs where we're at. But by making noise, we can actually put them back into their, uh, you know, looking for you state, which is them walking and sneaking around. And by doing that, they are staying near that grenade box, which convenient <laughs> conveniently we can just shoot. And uh, yeah, as you can see, very efficient. <laughs> shoot the grenade box, it goes boom, two guards die, and then the reticle lines, perfectly, uh, lines up perfectly for a headshot. So it's perfect. Now this guard spawned after I hit the switch, which is a mission objective by the way. But he won't notice me because he's busy with the body that was knocked out before. So there are two guards here, which I'm going to conveniently ignore by just running past them. Hopefully they will not damage me too much, and normally they don't, but we'll see. No, oh, they didn't shoot. That's very nice of them. As Lollipop said, I'm keeping track of my ammo. I have five shots left before I have to reload. And I have three headshots left to give, so if I don't miss any shots, we should be fine. Took a few hits here, but this is fine. We have way plenty of health still. I line up for some clean headshots here. Nice. I have to kill this god. And there we go, ammo worked out perfectly. I skipped the dialogue, the dialogue uh, is skipped, I can talk to this guy right away. He gives us an encryption key, which is the mission objective again. And because we have finished all mission objectives, the elevator works and we can go to the next level. I can finally reload. And the load trigger is above the elevator, so I just jump into it to save a tiny bit of time. Over here there are a few guards, but I just decided to go through up here. Let me try to jump again, because that was very sloppy. There we go. Much cleaner. And we roll back in here. We do some AI manipulation by shooting the wall. Makes these guards turn around and I can run past them without them hitting me too much. Over here I skip three guards in the corner back there, you can only see one, but there's actually three by just jumping on that uh, wall. And I'm going to make use of the fully automatic mode of the of my gun right now to quickly take out the three guards. And the behavior is very random. I the tasers so I can take care of these three guards here. Everybody do the flop. Well, <laughs> almost. Oh, not this guy. He doesn't like doing the flop. He didn't like the flop. <laughs> well, he died now, so too bad for him. Should have flopped. Should have flopped, yes. Now this guy doesn't see me because it's very dark here, and he is distracted by the wall mine. There are three guards here, and uh, I will taste one of them. And the other two shouldn't see me if I'm fast enough and run past them. And I will hand over the commentary to Lollipop again. 
Yeah, so uh, for this cutscene, we are gonna be stunning our good friend here. <laughs> and uh, now he's not able to do his animations during the cutscene. Uh, so that saves about 8 seconds during the cutscene, because as you can see, well, he's um, he's knocked out. And then we're doing a wall jump to the end of the level here instead of going up the stairs, because going up the stairs is slow. There we go, end of the level. This is Chinese Embassy 1. There's just a bunch of parkouring. So we have time for two to three donations. Let's hear them. Uh, yeah, well, I would actually like to mention that coming up in just about five hours, uh, we're going to be having the Pokemon Diamond Run by Echi, and there is currently a bid war to give Chimchar a nickname. Uh, and Stream, if you're not aware, right now with $2,893, Baidoof is in the lead, <laughs> beating Uncle Iroh by only $3. So, again... We have uh, another five hours or so until that game begins, and there's only a $3 difference between the two. So I would love to see some, some stronger competition there and see someone take the lead. Alright, you took me, you, you saw me take out the gun and uh, drop into this uh, sewers without, you know, it saved time, and I will let uh, Lollipop handle this. So, shooting the water here with the shock uh, accessory from our gun and then shooting this enemy. So, by shooting the water, we were actually able to stun or shock two of the enemies. Uh, because, for some reason, if you shock the water, everything in the water gets shocked as well. Which is pretty impressive, I think, for an old game like this to have such a feature. I think it's really cool. Uh, so, we use that to our advantage here in the sewer. So, I should have quickly mentioned that I lost half of my HP by dropping the sewers, but we don't really need it, so it's fine. Alright, so going up the sewers, we're going to have to wait for this guy to turn around and leave us alone. Come on. Okay, thank you, sir. And now going up this ladder, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of an out-of-bounds here to skip the entire roof section of this level. So that saves about 30 to 40 seconds. And uh, we're just going to parkour around this wall here and, uh, you know, casually walk into barbed wire because that's fine. And, uh, yeah. That's a skip. We do some AI manipulation here and run past the guards. If there are any donations, now is a good time. I'd also like to mention that we're all here for Save the Children. Uh, Save the Children was the first global organization devoted solely to serving children's needs and securing their rights. They are often the first or only child-focused organization working in the hardest to reach places where it's toughest to be a child. As a result, Save the Children's teams have been proactive in preparedness for pandemic threats. All right, over here, we infiltrate, um, well, this area. There are a bunch of guards, but they don't see us because they're blind, which is a recurring theme in this run. The only enemy I care about is this dog right there, because he can smell me. I took him off with a ring fall quickly. And when he smells you, he goes, he follows you to the end, to just where you are, and then the soldiers see you, and they kill you, and the mission's over. And you saw me equip the laser mic again, and I will let Lollipop handle this section. So just like earlier, we're going to be listening to this dialogue here from uh, these guys. And we only have to listen to about 80% of the dialogue here. Uh, so there's going to be a specific line of dialogue in German that Distro knows about. <laughs> that's going to tell him that he's just hit 80%. And then he's just going to be able to move on with the level. So coming up after this dialogue, we're going to be doing Gazebo Skip. Now Gazebo Skip is a very precise out of bounds uh, that... Uh, yeah, it's gonna save a lot of time. It's gonna, it's coming up. It's really nice. I'm gonna let this real listen to the dialogue here so he knows when to do it. There's a bit of audio delay on my end, so I have to be careful. I will wait a bit longer than usual. Okay, we good. Okay, there we go. So now lining up for gazebo skip very precisely. There we go. This is gonna be jumping on this small lantern, lamp, whatever. And now doing a wall jump on the gazebo here in order to go out of bounds. First try. Hell yeah. <laughs> this trick is actually nice. very difficult. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so now we are out of bounds. We're able to uh, run to the other side of this uh, section. Wall jump onto this van. And a bit higher on the van. Because that makes sense. And... Oh, actually. Okay. Now... <laughs> So now we're going to be listening to dialogue again from the limousine. And the reason why we went all the way here is because this is actually where the level ends. And uh, we are right 
above where the NPC that ends the level is going to spawn, and we're going to be able to just talk to her immediately after we're done listening to this dialogue. So whenever the character laughs for the second time, we'll be able to stop listening to his amazing performance and finish the level. It is amazing. <laughs> Alright, so Cohen is going to spawn after around 10 seconds. And as I mentioned before, I can only talk to NPCs when there's a dialogue going on. So I will just skip the longest dialogue, which allows me to talk to her as she spawns. And I was Chinese Embassy 1. Now we're in Abattoir, which is a very tricky level, but I will just sneak past these guards that you just saw. Do a small trick jump to get up here. Now this is a minefield with some spotlights, and I will take a very specific path so that the mines don't get me. And I will make sure that the spotlight doesn't see me, because then a sniper would hit me and I would take around half of my HP of damage. And I don't want that to happen because uh, in this level there's a lot of fighting. Now I'm in, in the antenna section, which Lollipop will explain. Yes, yeah, so in this section, if you make too much noise, enemies are going to come rushing in and you won't be able to hit the button. But Distro is taking a very specific route and he's actually able to sprint through the roof without actually triggering any enemies. So by doing this very specific path, he's able to still hit the button and not get rushed in. If there is time for one donation, now is a good time. Um, I do want to mention that we are just under $500 away from hitting 30000 and that's a pretty big milestone. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at just about $468 until we hit 30000 So get those donations in now, and you have a good chance of them getting red. Okay, so... Over here I'm going to one-way lockpick this door. And there is a guard around here that I have to just hatch up quickly. I do some AI manipulation by being very noisy and just dropping down here and then quickly taking out this guard before he sees us. But this is to lure this guy to the door. And he's fascinated by the door. Okay, I will, I will actually revert on that. Normally he's a bit slower, but now I have to take him out because he was a bit faster than usual. Normally you can just run past him because he's just busy opening the door, but in this case I had to shoot him. I will let Lollipop handle this uh, section. Yeah, so as you can see, Distro just reloaded because uh, we've had time while crouching there. And then he shot the, um, not the ceiling, the well, the floor. And he's under the floor, okay? So the ceiling for him, but the floor, actually. And so the enemies are looking at the floor right now, and now he's in the ceiling. Man, this is confusing. Anyway, so we're dropping down from the ceiling, and now they're looking at the floor, so they don't see us. Okay, hope that made sense. Anyways, we're entering the freezer now, so there's a bunch of white smoke everywhere, so we're gonna be using the thermal vision now. Don't worry, your monitor's fine, it's not broken. This is actually what the game looks like. <laughs> so in order to be able to see the enemies here, uh, we're using a thermal vision, so... There, this enemy is giving us a bit of trouble here, he's not doing what we want him to do. There we go. Thank you. Now we just sneak past him. Okay, that didn't that's work fine. out, okay, I have oh, to do no, a backup actually. here. <laughs> Alright, backup strats. Okay, other backup strats. I will do the back of the backup. Yeah. We're just punching the back of the backup, yes. <laughs> okay. We just have IM manipulation here and quick headshots. There are a bunch of turrets that shoot at me. I just tried to take a path where I take as least damage as possible. There are three guards here, which I will try to quickly take out without them damaging me. Okay, good. I can reload while walking through here without losing any time. Oh, I can leave the section. There's a guard um, around the corner here, like back there, but I'm faster than him, so he doesn't shoot me. Now we get to the second section of Abattoir. I equip the sticky cams, which I talked about before. And the thing about sticky cams is there's no bullet through, so I can just shoot lights. And when I shoot the lights, the turret gets distracted and they shoot um, the place where I shot the light, if that makes sense. They will distract the turrets pretty much. This has a bit of a drop, so I have to aim a little bit higher. But there's another light behind this. Oh! I don't know why that turret shot me, that's not supposed to happen. I guess it didn't like you. This is, oh, wow. this is a bit of... Oh, it's this guy, I see. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting. Oh boy, that quick save was in a weird spot. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's never happened. <laughs> okay, now this is a bit awkward. I have to see what they have to do now. This is backup strat time. 
Does that work? No. Okay, I was just yellow through and hoping for the best. Okay, this will have to do. That's never happened before. <laughs> Classic. Ah, good enough. <laughs> so another thing about sticky cams is you can headshot enemies and it knocks them out. It looks very silly, but it works. I will re-equip to tasers here and Lollipop is going to explain this section. Okay, so after talking to these NPCs here, there's gonna be six enemies we're gonna have to kill in a specific order. Uh, I'll explain why in just a second. So, shooting this guy on the right here, and then we are gonna take out these three enemies. There we go. Now we're gonna stun this guy, because we actually want him to kill- we actually want to kill him last. So we're gonna go over to this jumpsuit enemy, kill him. And now kill the last enemy. Now the reason why we kill the jumpsuit enemy before him is because if you kill the jumpsuit enemy as last, Lambert will scream at you and Sam will be frozen. And we don't want that to happen because it's slow. And same here, uh, we got killed by the turret here in order to uh, skip dialogue from Lambert instead of being frozen in place and listening to him talk because who wants to do that? So by dying, uh, we can just, well, fail successfully the mission. <laughs> Let me turn off the light in the kitchen so no one sees me. Then I attempt to shoot this light, please. Okay. There we Which go. will make this god not see us. And I'm going to take him out, and there is a bit of parkouring, so... Again, good time for donations, if there are any. Um, I do see that we're definitely getting some in right now, uh, because I did see that Uncle Iroh is now in the lead. Um, but I also want to mention right now, there's still an incentive to hit um, RC Tycoon. Right now, we need $1,000... Um, to get that bid war met for, <clears throat> excuse me, for RC Tycoon, and we're $110 there. It's going to upgrade the difficulty from easy. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> uh, it's for Crash the Coasters. Set all the coasters to fly off the tracks and blow up. No humans will be harmed. We promise. Unless. All right, so over here there are three gods. For some reason, they don't notice us even if you shoot the glass and the uh, light, and then we roll behind him. He just don't notice us. We hack the computer because this is a mission objective. And by the time the free gods see us, it's already way too late for them to react. Now I equip the rainfall so I can take out this god. And I shoot the back here so the god is distracted, the second one. He doesn't see me. Now I make sure to open the right side of this door that you see. Because there's a turret in the corner and the door will block it so it can't shoot me. Now there's another turret here, which I will try to bypass without taking too much damage. I uh, equipped to smoke grenades and I would lollipop explain um, this section. Yeah, so this drill is gonna shoot a smoke grenade down the stairs. And for some reason that attracts the general, which we need for the eye scanner, which is right next to us, to run towards us. So yeah, smoke throwing a smoke grenade downstairs attracts him to us. Doesn't make sense, but <laughs> video games, right? So we grab him, use him on the eye scanner, and we are able to open the door. Very convenient. Oh yeah. Also, don't listen to Fire Rung's beautiful voice. Oh, listen to it, it's beautiful. Um, anyway, this is the last section of Chinese Embassy 2. This is a bit, uh, pretty long one. I will equip tasers, the three guards here. I will just take out this one to my side, because he would see me and then shoot me. Alert the other two. Oh, there's another god um, on the stairs here, but I can just quickly take him out before he actually notices me. This camera is useless, even if it sees you. It's, it, it's, it doesn't do anything, I don't know why it's even there. But we have to wait for this guy to enter the code, he doesn't see us, he has to turn away. And he will open the door for us, which is very convenient. But there are three gods here. I will take out two of them, and the third one won't even notice us. Or maybe he just pretends to not having heard anything because he's scared. I don't know. Anyway, I roll into this cutscene and you see a gas uh, pump and two trucks and... Lollipop! <laughs> yeah, so uh, remember this is a stealth game, right guys? So uh, if you see a gas pump and two trucks, I'll let you imagine what's gonna happen here, so... Very stealthily, Distro is going to go on this ramp here and blow up everything to make sure that they don't know we're coming. And now we're going to open this hatch here on the ground uh, while this cutscene is running so that actually the animation of opening the hatch is playing while the cutscene is playing. So when the cutscene is over, there, the hatch is open. We, we skip a few seconds here. 
And uh, yeah, then we go down here, shock this guy, and keep going. But there is another god coming around the corner, and he's going to be called back into the office. I, I will do some dialogue skips here, so you, that the animation goes faster. I always have to listen to the dialogue. There we go. In the casual playthrough, uh, well, he will he will enter some door codes. In the casual playthrough, you have to use a thermal vision to see the numbers he entered. But I have them on a sheet of paper right in front of me, so I don't need to do memorize them. I will just chase him for like one minute or so. So if there's any donations, now is a great time. Certainly. Thank you to Mini Fridge for your fifty dollar donation. They say loving the Splinter Cell run. Runner and co-host are making this run very fun and informative. You have time for a few more donations yeah. during this section. One or two. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, again, for in terms of prizes, uh, it, with a minimum donation of twenty-five dollars, you enter yourself for a chance to win a ViewSonic Elite XG two hundred and seventy. Now, this is an estimated value two hundred dollar monitor that you can win only by donating twenty-five dollars, and these donations are cumulative. So, if you donate throughout the event, uh, you can eventually. Uh, Work your way up towards hitting this minimum to qualify for this prize. Okay, there are two more door codes to go. 1834 and 7921. And you will notice the door is open here, and I'm still entering the door code. The reason is because Lambert will start whining and uh, fail the mission for some reason. I don't do that. <laughs> didn't open the door. <laughs> I will casually run to this cutscene, listen to this beautiful voice, and as soon as gameplay resumes, I will have to grab Confire Room as quickly as possible and make him hack the computer. There we go. Now, he will die under very mysterious circumstances that we will not question, I guess. Makes sense, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we're running for explosions now because we're cool like that. And just running through fire, I have enough HP to tank it. Alright, entering the last level already. Now, I'm going to do a glitch here by just bumping into this cliff. I did get a fall damage, but it's high enough for Sam to do the death sound from falling to, from too high. So that's an amazing section, you just hear Sam scream. Uh, there's a bit of parkouring here, see so if there are any donations. Now it's again a good time. Uh, once again, we are working to benefit Save the Children. Save the Children focuses on the most vulnerable children, including girls who are for forced into early marriage, young boys and girls who are forced into dangerous working conditions, or children at risk of recruitment into armed groups. Uh, when children experience trauma, Save the Children works to ensure they receive care, rehabilitation, and psychosocial support they need to be children again. So again, every donation goes to Save the Children, and we really appreciate everything that everybody's done so far. We're very close to hitting $30,000 and close uh, to surpassing um, a recent ESA. I believe it was ESA 2020 that we're about to pass. Oh, ESA Winter 2019 at $30,075. Uh, we'll be passing that. Oh, wow. All right, over here, there are a bunch of enemies. There's some snipers in the tower. Uh, two gods here in the courtyard with two dogs. Dogs are dangerous, so I'm gonna shoot the light so they don't see me. Because if I'm in the broad daylight, in the, in the light, and they look towards me, no matter how far they are, they will just see me. It's kind of crazy. I'm attempting an out-of-bounds trick here with a somewhat tricky jump. Make a quick save, there we go. Okay, now we're on the fence here. And the lights are shut, so the dog should not spot me. And instead of going for the maze here, I can actually just jump above uh, the hedges here, which is pretty fun to do, honestly. And we drop back inbounds, like this. And we enter the presidential palace. We pick up the one-way lockpick here, because we're going to need it later. And I'm going to equip the diversion camera, which Lollipop is going to explain. So, the diversion camera in this game uh, makes noise, to attract enemies and then you can uh, put a poisonous gas to then take care of them. So we're going to be using that throughout this level. Uh, firstly here, but this was going to put down the camera and just put up some gas and shoot the last enemy of the row because he's too far away from the gas. 
to uh, go f to die fast enough, so <laughs> might as well shoot him. So shooting the light here, and then shooting this guy under the helmet because his helmet makes him invincible. <laughs> and uh, now jumping on this lamp here, very precise jumping up to this ramp and to the door. Happy I got that first try. It's a very tricky jump. Um, there are two gods here, one one there, which I'm going to ignore for now. But I'm going to deal with these two guys. I have only three ring force, I have to stun this guy and then just punch him, which will knock him out. Now I use the one-way lockpick that I picked up um, like two minutes ago, I think. And Lollipop will explain this section. So we intentionally went through the lasers here to attract an alarm. Uh, and we're gonna kill this guy, get this computer thing. And then two enemies are running behind us uh, since we hit the alarm. So we're just gonna use the diversion camera once again and use the poisonous gas to just take care of him quickly. Perfect. Or smack him in the face. <laughs> that works too. But there's only one god left for this section, but we can just sneak past him with the crouch glitch, no issues. And we enter the last section of the run. I think we're ahead of the SMF quite a bit, I'm not sure, but we should be. There's still a few minutes left. Um, over here, I kept the smoke grenades. There are three randomly spawning guards. This is a very random section. I shoot the smokes and I hope that they run into my smoke grenades. And this is a very bad scenario. Let me see how I can handle that. Oh, wow. Well. There we go. Okay. In the ideal scenario, Still, um... all of them jump into the uh, smoke. Yeah, usually they would all run to the smoke to check it out and then die, <laughs> which is kind of light. Sorry, so the bodies are hidden, and I will give the commentary to Lollipop again. Okay, so something interesting about this elevator is that in the German version of the game, uh, since the dialogue is faster, the enemies for this elevator actually start coming at you when the dialogue ends. And since the dialogue is faster, well, they come to the elevator faster. So it's actually a bit riskier to play German for this level because then you have to YOLO your way through these enemies and not get hit too much. So this sort of only took like one hit, so he's fine. Very but, lucky. Yeah. Oh, what was that? Now this guy is called Combine Nicolats. I will not explain who that is for the for people who want to play the game for the story. But we have to use him on the retina scanner. Then we get ambushed by a squad here. And we skip 15 dialogues. Let's see. Oh, this is scary. What do we do? <laughs> I have an audio delay, so this could be a bit tricky. You have to pay attention. But the next dialogue skip. There will be a blackout. I will make use of the confusion to take a very specific path. I have to be fast enough and uh, be a bit lucky so they don't shoot me. And I took one hit, and this is perfect. Now, um, you see Nicolas being escorted here. I will shoot the light you see on the bottom right, right after I gain movement control. I use a taser because it has no bullet drop, so it's very precise. Uh, sorry, it has no bullet spread. It has a bullet drop, so I have to aim a bit higher. Walk into the water so the guards are distracted, and I will attempt a trick jump up here. I have to be very fast so this guard doesn't see me. Okay, that's a bit unfortunate. Well, he saw you. <laughs> I got straight, no problem. That's why I was careful with the quick save. Anyway, there's going to be a, a cutscene playing here which shows Nicolas talking to the president. Um, and I'm going to have to assassinate Nicolas from here. So after I regain movement control, I will shoot him. But first I will shoot the light so a guard will not see me that is coming up soon. And you should get ready for the timer because it's kind of soonish. So we gave Nicolas a headshot there. We opened this door. This guy doesn't see us because I shot the light. He do a somewhat out of bounceish trick here, but not quite. Wait, let me try that again. There we go. But there are two gods entering here, which will hopefully not see me. Okay, that's a bit unlucky. But I think I'm fine. Okay. Now the timer will uh, the time will finish when I enter this door when the screen fades to black. So time. Nice! Sub one hour. That was Splinter Cell, everybody.
All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank, thanks to USA for having, uh, for having the run. Really appreciate it. I will keep the outro short. Uh, thank you to Lollipop OMG, who actually learned the speedrun uh, to be able to commentate. Uh, do you want to say anything, Lollipop? Uh, it was my pleasure being here. I hope you guys enjoyed the run uh, as much as we enjoyed commentating it. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch if you want at Lollipop OMG. And you can follow me at uh, twitch.tv slash uh, distrotv. <laughs> okay. All right, enjoy the rest of the marathon, guys.